Hey guys, you're watching Dansky, the place to be to develop your creative skills. In this tutorial, we're going to be picking a logo from this book here, Logo Modernism, and we're going to recreate it in Adobe Illustrator. And if you'd like to check out this book on Amazon, there is a link in the description. But anyway, let's just pick a logo and jump straight into it. So for this tutorial, we have the Nortex Still logo that you can see on screen. This was designed by Paul Brand in 1966. And uh, it reminds me of two paper clips actually joined together. And we're going to create this as a beautiful vector graphic in Illustrator because what you're seeing now is a scan. So first thing we're going to do is just drag over this. And from the transparency panel on the right, we will drop the opacity down to something around 30% just so we can still see it, but it's not going to interfere with the version that we're creating. And if we go to Object, Lock and Selection, it will lock that just so we don't select it by mistake. And from the Swatches panel, let's just double click on any swatch and just make sure that the global option is selected. This will allow us to change the color of the logo at the end just by changing the swatch and it will update every instance of our color, in this case black, throughout the document. So a really handy time saver there. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is create these vertical lines and you can do this with either the line tool or the pen tool. I'll use the pen tool and let's just zoom in a bit and left click and hold shift to make sure we have a perfectly vertical line. And it wants to continue this line and we can just press escape on the keyboard and then go back to the main selection tool. And for this tutorial, I'll definitely recommend having your smart guides switched on from here and also snap to point. So we've got one line at the moment it has a black stroke. And from the stroke panel on the right, we can increase the weight. So let's bump this up a little bit. I think we'll go for 52. And we'll just position this stroke in the right place. So we'll just move that over. And you see the hand icon here, you can access that by pressing spacebar on your keyboard and then just left click to freely drag around the document. And we can adjust the length of our line like so. Okay, pretty good. So what we're going to do now is hold down Alt and Shift and just left click and drag out. So you have to left click on the shape, then hold Alt and Shift and drag out and it will create a copy. So if we create our copy and just let go here, and we can then press Command or Control D, and it will repeat that last action. Or if you don't want to do that, and you want to create it a slightly different way, the more manual way, you can see the spacing here is a little bit off. So what we can do, if I just throw this off deliberately now, so we'll make sure that our line on the very right is in the right position, the line on the left is in the correct position as well. The one in the middle is a little bit off. And what we can do is just drag over all of these and then from the alignment panel over here on the right or can be accessed here. We can select the horizontal distribute center option and it will just shuffle that middle one into position so all three lines are spaced equally apart. So we've got those three lines. Now we're gonna start creating some semicircles. So we can select the ellipse tool, left click and hold shift to draw a circle and Illustrator very kindly remembers the same stroke properties. And we can use the direct selection tool to drag over this bottom anchor point. And with just that anchor point selected, we can hit delete or backspace and it leaves us with a semicircle. And we can drag this into position and you can see those smart guides are really coming in handy here. Now you can drag this into a position like this. For me personally, I like to switch into outline mode, which is command or control Y on the keyboard. And it allows me to work with a very unstylized wireframe. So I can line everything up here in this wireframe mode. And I'm holding shift here just to make sure my semicircle doesn't get skewed out of shape. And if it doesn't snap, just zoom in and just try that again. Nope, doesn't want to snap. There we go. We got it. We got it almost. And we'll just bring that down. 
So just zoom in as much as you need to, to help Illustrator recognize that you're trying to snap one object to another. And of course, now we can come out of outline mode, command or control Y on the keyboard, and voila, we have our perfectly created semicircle. And what we can do is left click and then hold down Alt and Shift, and it will create a copy and it snaps in place there. And we can left click and hold Shift and scale up from the top right corner to create this larger version here. Now for this step, it's important that this line here, this space is consistent. So we don't want something like this where it gets thinner on the right. So just create that as consistently as you can and just scale it up holding shift. So the semicircle retains those same proportions. So I think something like this. And then we can hold Alt and Shift and drag this one down. And we're going to create this bottom semicircle here. And we can hover over one of the corners and hold Shift and rotate. And holding Shift keeps the rotation at set 45 degree increments. We're going to go for 180 and let go. Drag this up. And just check that back in outline mode. Remember that's Command or Control Y. And we'll hold shift and scale up from the bottom left corner. And it doesn't seem to want to snap there. So we'll just zoom in using the zoom tool. There we go. And it snaps in place perfectly. Now for this part here, to get that rounded end, what we can do is just select this line. And from the stroke panel, you can see by default we have butt cap selected. And if we change that to round cap here, it just rounds off that corner. And because we've created our semicircles all perfectly, we have a nice consistent width there all the way around the edge. And these very minor details, in my opinion, are super important when creating logo designs. Cool, so it's looking pretty good. What we can do now is just zoom in here and select this top semicircle. Now this is pointing straight down, so we're going to use the scissor tool to create an incision. So by default, you may have the eraser tool here. Just left click and hold until you see the scissor tool. And then somewhere around here, we're just going to make a little cut. So just left click on the path and then select the direct selection tool. And we can drag over this end anchor point here. And if we hit delete or backspace, because we created that little incision, this now becomes the new endpoint. And what we can do is drag over everything on the left with the main selection tool, and then hold Alt and Shift and drag over to the right, or you can go Edit, Copy, Edit, Paste in place, and then just drag over holding Shift until it's in the right position and then hold shift and rotate from one of the corners until you get that 180 rotation and then just line everything back up. Now the scan that I'm working from isn't totally straight but I think this is this is pretty good. And then all we have to do is just connect these two points so we can use the pen tool and just click on this anchor point and we can continue and we can continue this line. I was suddenly forgot how to speak for a second there. And you'll see it has that little link icon next to the pen tool. Just left click and it will continue that. And it completes that line. And we can go back to our main selection tool. And if we go back into outline mode, that's command or control Y. You'll see everything is, uh, is looking pretty good. We've got a nice clean path. Everything is joined up. Fantastic. So what we can do now is we could try and scale this up or down, holding shift, and it will do that, and it will lose the proportions that we've created. However, you can go to the transform panel either here on the right or here, and you can select scale strokes and effects. So if we just tick that box, when we select this now, it will scale those strokes proportionally together. So that's really useful if you do want to adjust the size of it after you've created it. And what we can also do is if we just go to edit cut and it will delete that and copy it to the clipboard, we can go object, unlock all, and we can move this out the way. 
and then go to edit paste in place so we have our finished version here at the moment these strokes are all editable so you could still go in and adjust the stroke weight if you really wanted to but once you're happy and you don't need to edit this anymore just go to object expand and you'll see this box pop up leave fill and stroke selected click OK and we now have lots of different pieces and all we need to do now is just drag over everything and from the Pathfinder panel on the right select Unite that's the top left option and if I go into outline mode you'll see what this does it will just join all of these individual shapes into one complete shape so it's a nice way of tidying up the design of course it now looks like this which isn't correct so let's go back and see what happened let's try expanding that again okay sometimes you may need to expand more than once just in case there's any stray anchor points or random bits of stroke or anything that's left over let's try that one again pathfinder unite nope doesn't want to work okay let's have another go We've got the stroke over here as well as the fill and they've got question marks on them so that's obviously causing a problem. So if we set the stroke to none, so it doesn't seem to change anything but it actually is and we can change the fill to our black swatch. So we had those question marks, we're now manually telling Illustrator that we have a fill with no stroke and if we drag over everything and then try and unite this together now it works so sometimes it's a case of just trying to problem solve why something isn't working when you start using the pathfinder panel and the expand options but that's always a good one to check is if you have question marks down here on your fill or your stroke just try removing the stroke before using the pathfinder panel or just manually adding that fill just to help illustrate to recognize that there may be some leftover bits and bobs any kind of random anchor points that are causing a problem and you can just get rid of any styling on those before using the pathfinder panel and we can check this in outline mode and it all looks good and what we can do is now just jump into our swatches panel double click black tick the preview box and we can change the color and it will update our logo design or anything else that uses this black color in our document and there we go that was the nox to till logo designed by paul brand in 1966. guys if you'd like to become a patron of the channel and get access to the monthly private live streams free downloads sneak peeks behind the scenes or just chat with me directly there is a link to my patreon in the description but as always thank you so much for watching take care and i'll see you next time oh.